Here's how to do it. Call 1-800-367-0403. It'll be delivered free of charge. Also, look on your doorstep for the new Home Buyer's Guide newspaper, which comes to you also absolutely free of charge. You'll find 228 more Iowa Realty listings inside. Have a great week. We'll see you next time on Home Buyer's Guide. Join us each week for Iowa Realty's Home Buyer's Guide, an informative hour featuring Iowa Realty open houses, new construction projects, and financial information for today's home buyer. If you would like more information concerning this morning's show or how your home may be included on Home Buyer's Guide, contact the Iowa Realty office nearest you. Home Buyer's Guide is brought to you by Iowa Realty, Iowa's largest. Steve Carlin and TV8, where news is number one. Welcome to Face the Nation. I'm Bob Schieffer. Judge Clarence Thomas and Professor Anita Hill have both had their days in court now, or the Senate's version of it. Their testimony has been gripping, tearing, punctuated by partisan bickering and finger pointing, but above all, it has been contradictory. After approximately three months of working there, he asked me to go out socially with him. Senator, I did not ask her out. His conversations were very vivid. He spoke about acts that he had seen in pornographic films involving such matters as women having sex with animals and films showing group sex or rape scenes. Did you ever have a discussion of pornographic films with Professor Hill? Absolutely not. Thomas told me graphically of his own sexual prowess. Because I was extremely uncomfortable talking about sex with him at all, and particularly in such a graphic way, I told him that I did not want to talk about these subjects. One of the things that has tormented me over the last two and a half weeks has been how do I defend myself against this kind of language and these kind of charges? How do I defend myself? Professor, do you swear to tell the whole truth? Who is telling the truth? Will Clarence Thomas be confirmed? We'll ask Judge Thomas's mentor, Senator John Danforth, two Judiciary Committee members, Senator Patrick Leahy of Vermont and Senator Arlen Specter of Pennsylvania, and Charles Ogletree, one of Anita Hill's attorneys. The Thomas nomination battle, an issue facing the nation. Judge, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth? From CBS News, Washington, Face the Nation, with CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent, Bob Schieffer. This portion of Face the Nation is sponsored by the Archer Daniels Midland Company, ADM, supermarket to the world. At first, it doesn't seem to be much of a problem. A tire here a tire there. But it all adds up to the point where Americans dispose of more than 250 million tires a year. But at the Archer Daniels Midland Company, we're doing something about it. We're taking tires that would ordinarily be an environmental problem. We're shredding them and mixing them with coal to create a fuel that burns cleaner in our power plant providing the energy we need to produce ethanol, a gasoline additive derived from surplus cornstarch that helps reduce carbon monoxide emissions by up to 25%. So as you can see, by using a little ingenuity, we at ADM have got yet another good idea rolling. ADM, supermarket to the world. And joining us first this morning is Judge Clarence Thomas's strongest supporter on Capitol Hill, a man who has sat by his side throughout this process, Senator John Danforth of Missouri. Senator, thank you for coming by thank this you. morning. Let me ask you first, uh, do you have any kind of a vote count now? Uh, do you have any idea of what the vote is going to be? Do you still think Judge Thomas I, I have be absolutely no idea, Bob, and, and I think that one thing that's happened in the last week to Clarence Thomas, and he said this to me, is that he really doesn't care that much how the vote comes out. Uh, the Supreme Court was something that was a great honor for him, but now whether he gets to the Supreme Court or whether he stays where he is, he wants his life back. That's what's important. I haven't been doing vote counts. I wouldn't know how to do them at this point. 
I think that the main question is how do the American people feel not so much about Clarence Thomas, but about this process that he's been going through. So you're saying that at this point, uh, whether he gets it or not, uh, is sort of immaterial to him. It seemed to it, me... I think it's secondary. I think it's, second, it's certainly secondary to his life. And I, I don't think it's the key issue before us now. R really, the problem is that the system has been misused. Senator Biden said yesterday, the system is good. This is not the American system. This is a perversion of it. This is uh, interest groups and Senate staffers leaking material. This is making a public circus out of something that, that should and is in the normal confirmation process looked at by, by senators in, in a very, very uh, closed way. But to have this kind of thing go into the American living rooms and to have a person subjected to this kind of a public mortification really isn't what the country is, is uh, supposed to be. And no cause justifies this. No, no political agenda of anybody justifies destroying a human being. Senator, if there is one question that must have been asked, if there are 200 million people in this country, uh, if it, it must have been asked at least 100 million times over the past two days, is who do you think is telling the truth? Now, I know you think that Judge Thomas is telling the truth. Do you think it's possible that Professor Hill thinks she's telling the truth? I, I think it's possible, but I want to say that I'm not an expert. I, I'm not a psychiatrist. I, I don't have any training in this kind of thing. I think that it is possible that she believes this. I, I, we are told uh, a number of psychiatrists have come forward uh, and said that there is a disorder where people uh, who are in employment situations can fantasize. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but can build up this kind of thing in their minds. And when you uh, put that professional judgment, not about her because they haven't analyzed her, but this is their basic fundamental statement, together with the fact that some of the things that have embellished her testimony have apparently come from a novel and from a, a court case, facts that have somehow entwined themselves in her story, to me there is something wrong with that story. It is not right, and obviously there is a, a clear conflict between Judge Thomas and Professor Hill. But to say, well, somebody is lying, lying to me means an intentional misstatement of fact. And we all know that, unfortunately, there are some people in this country who say things that really aren't true or aren't accurate, but they intend to be saying the right thing. Well, when I said to you that uh, do you have reason to believe that uh, she thinks she's telling the truth, I have no reason myself to believe that she's not telling the truth. I, I know that you think, obviously, that she is not telling the truth. Yeah, I, why, I, I why think, I phrased I mean, it in the way Yeah, to me, and the basic question of, of what is truth is very clear. I mean, first of all, Clarence Thomas has been totally consistent. She has not. Secondly, I am told that where sexual harassment is uh, a fact, it generally comes in clusters. I mean, it's not just one isolated episode. Today, there are some 13 women who have worked over the years with Clarence Thomas who will come forward before the committee and who will say before the committee, this isn't the Clarence Thomas we know. I mean, it is just totally yeah. out of keeping with this person we've known for so By long. By suggesting, however, that this may be some kind of a disorder, some sort of a fantasy, are, are, are you suggesting that perhaps she is unstable in some way? And, and that really is kind of a serious charge. Do you, is there anything to sort Bob, of back I, I that don't, up? I really don't want to make a serious charge. I don't know her, and I'm not competent to do it. All I'm saying is, that somebody is right and somebody isn't right. And I know Judge Thomas and all of these women who have worked with him know Judge Thomas. This isn't him. Therefore, I think that she isn't right. And the fact that she went to work with him subsequently, the fact of all these phone conversations, to me, that isn't in keeping with the experience that she relates. Now, how do you explain that she relates it? 
Uh, is it necessary to say, well, she's a liar, that she's intentionally making it up? I don't necessarily think that's so. I'm not sure what the reason is, but I do know this. Whatever happened to trigger this didn't come out of the blue. It was prompted by Senate staffers. It was prompted by these interest group people, the Alliance for Justice, the people for the American Way, and so on, who for the last 105 days have been fanning out around now, the let country me just looking interrupt you. for the dirt. Just interrupt you. Say the people from the American Way specifically deny that they've had anything to do with that. You, you challenge their denial. I, I, I will say that in this specific case of Professor Hill, apparently it was Senate staffers who contacted her, one of whom apparently once immediately passed worked for the, with the people for the American Way. But beginning right at the start, when the president nominated Clarence Thomas on July 1st, it was all documented in the Washington Post yesterday, these interest groups assigned lawyers, investigators, people to go out, comb through everything, make calls to people all over the place, and they were looking for dirt. They were looking for a way to destroy him. And unfortunately, what's happened is that various groups that are ideologically very committed, which is fine, but the thing is anything goes to further that ideology. And if a person has to be destroyed in the process, then that's just fine in their, in their view. My view is it really isn't America. And for the United States Senate to lend itself to this and to be part of it through the Senate staff and through this circus atmosphere forum, to me, that is something that is outrageous. And the only way to fix it is for the American people to speak out against it. Well, what by speaking out, you mean vote against uh, senators? No, uh, what I mean uh, is something more. Senators, what I, what I mean is some, new rules. Why? Yeah, what I mean is something more direct than that. The true jury is not the 100 members of the American uh, of the United States Senate. The true jury is the American people, and the American people have been watching this, and they have formed their own views, their views not only of Clarence Thomas and, and, and Ms. Hill, but their views of this process, this system of what's happened. A week ago, a little more than a week ago, Clarence Thomas was going to be the new Supreme Court Justice. Then this thing was leaked. Then it was taken by these people to the mass media. It was put out in the public domain, not handled in the ordinary way of an FBI report reviewed by senators as we all do with every other confirmation, but thrown out there in the public. And then for two days, this poor guy has to be humiliated in public, and that's wrong. All right, Senator Danforth, thank you. When we come back, uh, roundtable with two more Senate, with two senators on the Judiciary Committee and Anita Hill's lawyer. Senator, I would have preferred an assassin's bullet to this kind of living hell that they have put me and my family through. As hard as it is to live with, it's impossible to live without. At Merrill Lynch, we know that risk can be dealt with. It can be managed. It can even be turned to your advantage. To do that, you need a partner. A partner who understands it and can help you turn a world of risk into a world of opportunity. Merrill Lynch, we are bullish on the future. Every second of every day, there are three new mouths in this world to feed. Hundreds of millions more by the year 2000. And the majority of them will be born in countries where malnutrition is already reaching alarming proportions. Right now, the world has the food and the resources to conquer hunger. But it won't happen as long as we continue to look the other way. ADM, supermarket to the world.
What is Prozac, and why does it drive the Church of Scientology up the wall? It's an antidepressant that millions swear by. Should they? 60 Minutes, tonight. And in our Washington studio now, Senator Patrick Leahy of Vermont, Senator Arlen Specter of Pennsylvania, both of whom you've seen a lot this weekend, and Charles Ogletree, who is representing former Thomas associate Anita Hill. I want to thank all of you for coming. Mr. Ogletree, let me start with you. Senator Danforth has just suggested that perhaps uh, Anita Hill was fantasizing, that perhaps this is some sort of a syndrome, that uh, apparently there's been some conversations with, with psychiatrists who have observed this. What's your response to that? Well, this is part of the outrage that I personally feel. Uh, fortunately, Professor Hill has not responded to any of that. Not only is that ridiculous, but to suggest that on national television without any evidence at all, even any inference, I think is uh, racist, it's sexist, it's uncalled for. Senator Specter, I want to say, Senator Specter, I was offended by his comments as a former prosecutor and a member of the Senate to sit there in the middle of a hearing as a fact finder and make an allegation of perjury during the course of a fact finding hearing. I've tried cases with many prosecutors in this country and in this city. I have never heard a prosecutor ever imply perjury in the course of a proceeding. I couldn't imagine a senator doing that. Senator Simpson and his testimony predicted accurately that she was, she was threatened. That is, you're going to be vilified, you're going to be tortured, and that's exactly what happens. They are destroying this individual. They are using every bit of resources. This is, and I, I don't know what the October surprise might be. I suspect there'll be more. Maybe they'll say she wasn't even there. Maybe she doesn't exist. Maybe she has a twin sister. It's the kind of thing that makes me sad uh, to be in this country. It's a, it's a sad attack on her. It's an attack on black women. It's an attack on a person who's worked hard from those humble days in Oklahoma. I hope that we can heal through this process. I hope all of us will be able to do that. Well, I have a feeling I'm not going to need to say very much from here on in. I'll let you answer first, Senator Specter. Well, there's a great deal about what was just said, which uh, might uh, bring some replies. The issues of sexism and an issue of racism which we hear so much about when there's nothing else to say, uh, will have to be decided by other people. I won't characterize it. I think it's obvious without my characterization. When I was questioning a witness yesterday and got into the issue of uh, uh, Professor Hill's testimony, it was in a very, very careful way. And the issue here is one of credibility. And there are very significant indicators of lack of credibility by Professor Hill. Let me just capsulize and first wait, wait, the, the issue that you, you tried to bring out, and that was during the morning testimony, uh, you suggested to her that perhaps it had been a Senate staffer who had come to her and said, if you will come forward, it may be that Judge Thomas will withdraw the nomination. In, and she said, no, that was not the case. Uh, just in a very capsulized form during the afternoon session, she then said, well, that perhaps the Senate staffer had suggested that. Have right. I gotten it well, straight? Bob, 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 Bob it was not I who said that. It was a report in USA right. Today Very right. where, where uh, Professor Hill had a lot of notice. And I questioned her about it on Friday at great length. And she denied it. She thought through it. Uh, there was no mistake about the import of the question. Had a Senate staffer suggested to her the Judge Thomas might withdraw. Now, a great deal of what she says is very hard to pin down, uh, but that was a specific fact. And then in the afternoon, in an unresponsive way, she came back and changed her story <clears throat> flatly. Now, where an issue is credibil of credibility is at stake, that is very material and that is very relevant. And when the professor talks about what goes on in the courtroom and fact-finding, we're in a Senate proceeding. And for him to suggest that that was improper, I think he just doesn't understand what we're up to here. Uh, well, Senator Leahy, I'll, I'll, I'll so let, let's, uh, let's Senator I'll, Leahy uh, yeah, make I'll take an some observation on this. We were, we were asked by the Senate, I can't think of any member of the Judiciary Committee who wanted to be there in this whole thing to begin with, but if we were asked by the Senate to find out what happened. And that's what we were supposed to do. And we've had an awful lot of speeches yesterday. I mean, somebody's holding up the exorcist. What's going to be the new, new thing? The devil made me do it? I mean, this is getting to baloney. We have two articulate, intelligent people, Professor Hill and Judge Thomas. 
both testifying under oath, both lawyers, both understanding what an oath means, diametrically opposite stories. Obviously, one is lying on the basic facts. But for anybody to be able to say on that panel, we know for certain who that is, you can't do it. That's not the situation yet. Nobody knows for sure. Certainly the defenders of one or the other, because they know them, feel strongly that they are telling the truth. But the fact is, uh, we should be there not making political speeches, not using this racist uh, argument. We should be look at the fact, here is a woman in a fashion coming forward with a sexual harassment story. Uh, those, and she is being treated the way people usually do when they come through that. Oh, well, you're, you're wrong, let's find everything wrong about you. You have, uh, on the other hand, you have uh, Judge Thomas, depending on, they ought not to have all these other things that have nothing to do with the issue. Which one is telling the truth? What's the motive? Uh, in her case, what is her motive for coming forward? Here's a woman who has gotten a law degree. Uh, her, uh, she has a tenured professorship. She has a career. Why would she put all that at stake to lie? Uh, on the other hand, with Judge Thomas, uh, if he didn't do it, certainly he's going to be indignant. But if he did do it, he has a motive not to say it. I don't know which one is telling the truth. Well, let me ask Mr. Ogletree, uh, getting back to Senator Specter's question yeah. yesterday, uh, there's no question that Professor Hill said in the morning that she didn't think that was the case, and in the afternoon she conceded that perhaps it was. I why think, why that is that? Is, that is, first of all, if you listen to Senator Specter's question, the first question implied that Professor Hill had said something to USA Today. She didn't understand this question. I, I, I hope you would print that testimony word by word. He came at her seven or eight times, like a, a, a capable prosecutor should. And Ms. Professor Hill didn't understand what he was saying. He was trying to say, well, did you make these remarks? Did the reporter understand you to make these remarks? The point is this, that Professor Hill never understood what he was saying. He knew so that. So it was just a simple misunderstanding. It, it, just look at it. It wasn't, I didn't say this, and then I come back, I did say this. Do you, you accept that? It, I, ask him how many times. I, the point is the record, the record, I suggest, speaks for itself. What he said is that this is flat-out perjury. Those were Senator Specter's words. You still, flat out you still believe I, that I after think, hearing the explanation think, from the lawyer? I think it is ridiculous to say that Professor Hill did not know what the question was. The question was asked to her six or seven times, and she clearly understood it. Uh, but what the, the professor is doing, the first thing he walks out here, everybody else is under attack. Attack uh, Arlen Specter for what he did, characterize Senator Danforth as a racist, as a feminist. I have not if characterized there, if there him as a racist. Man, absolutely if, wrong. If, nobody interrupted you. If the there's point. one man, if there's one man who has fought more than any other in this country for the Civil Rights Act, it's Jack Danforth. For women's rights, for minority rights, for African American rights. It's just ridiculous. Anybody who lifts his head above the trench line in this matter is under attack. Well, you did use the term racism. It, the point was to come on here and for the first time to suggest, well, we've talked to psychiatrists who say there are people who have a psychological disorder. That may be an explanation for Professor Hill's testimony. That, that there is no basis in that. And I, to put that out to the American people after already talking about her fantasizing, talking about her uh, being jealous but not getting a promotion, talking about her having an interest in Judge uh, Thomas, talking about having an interest in someone else, this woman did not want to come forward. Her allegation was simple and clear. Judge Thomas made remarks to her. She reported those remarks to people at the time, in 1981. She reported it to several people then. If it's a fantasy, if it's psychological, why did she tell Judge Hirchner 10 years ago at the time? Why did she tell, excuse me, all that, the point is, if I could, you said about interrupting, right? The point is this. It, the point is this, Professor Hill has been threatened. I think Judge Thomas's life has been destroyed in many respects, and I'm sorry for that. Professor Hill's life in many respects has been destroyed, and I'm sorry for that. I'm deeply saddened for their families and all the people who are concerned about them. I think what's important here, what's important here is not to lose focus. That is that I hope that all of us can say, whatever, whatever the vote may be on Tuesday, that's irrelevant to me. Whatever the vote may be on Tuesday, that's irrelevant. What I think is most important is that we all start talking about there needs to be a healing process. Race, sex, 
Uh, everything has come up in All this right, discussion. Let me then, let me then ask the senators to respond to that. First Senator Specter, then Senator Leahy, uh, and I'm Bob, about out of time. Uh, Bob, as the, what the professor said in criticizing Senator Danforth, why doesn't he say he's wrong? Why does he have to be a racist? And when you come down to the evidence in the case on the critical issue of credibility, Professor Hill followed Judge Thomas from one job education to EEOC. She claimed she did so because she wouldn't be able to keep her job. And that was flatly wrong. She could have kept well, her job at education. Okay. Now, wait a minute. One All other right. point. <laughs> as careful a lawyer as Professor Hill didn't take any notes on these very important discussions, which she said occurred, but she kept a lot of other notes. So the issue of credibility, I think, is, uh, is very, very much an issue here. All right. right. I'm going to let Senator Lady have, have the last we're word. We're not going to have time to debate every part of it, but if Professor Hill was lying uh, as a lawyer, she would have concocted a far, far better story than this. Uh, the fact of the way the story is, it has to ring true and it comes down to this basic question. What could she conceivably gain by lying about this? She obviously didn't want to be there. Uh, she's, she stands to lose everything if she came in here and lied. She has nothing to gain by lying. All right, I'm very sorry. We're simply out of time. How about time. the Joe Biden issue, Bob? Thank you. Uh, uh, we don't have time. <laughs> okay. Back in a moment. That will I have nothing to gain. No one has promised me anything. I have nothing to gain here. This has been disruptive of my life. Look what ADM research has cooked up. An all-vegetable patty that contains dietary fiber is low in fat and free of cholesterol. One that's made to meet the demands of vegetarians and other health-conscious consumers. It's the Midland Harvest brand, Harvest Burger. And so far, it's made a big impression everywhere it's landed. ADM, supermarket to the world. As Nancy Walsh saves for her son's education, her savings and those of millions like her are invested in business. When business grows, our nation prospers and becomes more competitive in the world, which could open up a world of opportunities. And who will be there seeking out those opportunities for you and Nancy Walsh? Merrill Lynch. We're bullish on the future. And just one quick reminder, CBS News is going to be providing updates on the Thomas hearings throughout the afternoon during the football game, so stay with us. That's it for Face the Nation. Thanks for being here. This portion of Face the Nation was sponsored by Merrill Lynch, a tradition of trust. And by the Archer Daniels Midland Company, ADM, supermarket to the world. If you'd like to write to Face the Nation, send your letters to Bob Schieffer, Face the Nation, 2020 M Street Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20036. This broadcast was produced by CBS News, which is solely responsible for the selection of today's guests and topics. It originated in Washington, D.C. think this is the only way to pump up your pecs? How about chest implants for men? Join Harry Smith and Paula Zahn tomorrow on CBS This Morning. It's breakfast for your head. This is CBS. More and more people are finding new ways to get rid of their old mattress. I present. I present.